Five things I like about this thousand RR. Five things I like about this thousand RR. Well, you know what? I can't limit myself to just five. I like everything. <laughs> Number one, the engine. 193 horsepower, that's that's too much anywhere, be it street or even the most of the tracks actually. <laughs> and they say a lot of straights and a lot of high speed corners, you know, like they say, thou shalt not complain having too much power in your motorcycle. <laughs> It's not just that. On the rear wheel, almost everybody gets more than 185. That's like, there is hardly any horses lost from the crank to the chin, which is not the case with a lot of bikes, actually. That is also one of the reasons why when this was launched, this was the fastest liter class. Mostly because even other bikes had like Auburn, CBR, they had more than 180, 190 on the crank. They lost a lot when it came to the rear wheel power. So that is why this was competing with the Hayabusa ZX14R. And it's pretty economical as well, because uh, when I ride uh, decently fast not too much i'm talking about twisties not uh, boring highways or anything the highest i got was like 19 kilometers per liter that's like five liters per 100 kilometers in us mpg i can just convert it and put it here so yeah i consistently get around 18 kilometers per liter and also the way the bmw has tuned they're basically given everything why am i saying that is because a lot of people who got like the Acra full system exhaust without a perfect ECU remap or a perfectly tuned piggyback they actually lost power compared to stock so you can imagine the amount of fine tuning and the engineering to almost make the aftermarket parts redundant I mean that is just insane point two the electronics and the safety net see on a bike like this that actually pushes your limits without you even realizing that you're pushing your limits I would love to have every single electronic package available on the bike some people might argue that having those electronics prevent you from truly enjoying the bike but i honestly don't agree with that and it also depends on how the manufacturer has tuned those electronics because bmw has made the abs traction control so less intrusive moreover you can choose different modes like uh, rain sport and race and slick so basically in slick it almost does nothing and anyways if you're so brave and courageous you can always switch off abs and dtc and that was also one of the main reason why this became so famous when it was launched in 2010 because back then these electronic aids they were not so widely used but bmw put it on a production bike and that is why this was always claimed to be the easiest liter class to ride ever this was back in like 2010 but still it maintains that same status even though now you see a lot of bikes with so much electronics but still this is a very easy to ride later class because just take my example i never had any experience with later class before and have put in 10,000 kilometers now in the past year actually in the past seven months it's all those electronic rider aids that helps you and moreover you learn along with that it's not like you're just letting electronics do everything you also learn a lot and three comfort see on a super bike nobody really cares about comfort that's like the last thing on your list which you think of when you buy a super sport but s1000 was always claimed to be the most comfortable super bike even though i don't have a lot of experience with other liter class super bikes but from my experience on this totally agree with that if at all i'm a bit uncomfortable i just park on the side stand for a minute or two and just stretch that's it then i'm good to go for another 100 without any breaks that's all it takes just a quick break and that makes a lot of difference that's what i always do i've ridden 750 kilometers in a day and it also depends if you expect to have a couch like comfort while you're riding then you will certainly not get it on this you need something like a gs or a tour as you know i tour on this bike <laughs> so even though comfort is not on the top of my list i still care a bit about it I'm, and i'm really glad that this is more than enough for me and the stock seat itself is pretty good totally does the job for me it's perfect and four quick shifter I just can't tell you how much I love quick shifting on this bike. It's it's something you need to experience. You might think that oh, quick shifter, what does it do? You just don't have to pull in the clutch, big deal. Uh, but <laughs> seriously, guys, unless you have ridden a bike with quick shifter, I can't really explain how it feels like. It's It's simply too good and i know these days a lot of bikes come with quick shifter it's hardly any special feature to brag about but this was my first bike with the quick shifter and i so totally love it and why the exhaust the inline four exhaust uh, since i was a little kid 
I saw you should love seeing the MotoGP races just because of the exhaust, the sound of ee. <laughs> I just loved listening to that sound, and honestly, just owning a bike that actually makes that sound—it's just unbelievable. And the stock exhaust of this bike is pretty good. It's pretty loud once you cross like four, five thousand RPM. It's pretty loud for a stock. Man, see, I can just go on and on about the handling, how this handles like a 600 or even smaller bike, and also the attention it gets and the looks. But well, since it's only the five things I like about it, I'll just stop here. And apart from all this, it's my dream bike. Just being with it every day is such a privilege. By the way, I was nominated for this video by Motonut, so do check out his channel, unsubscribe him, dislike his videos, and. <laughs> Man, I wish I could have seen his reaction when he heard this. <laughs> well, just kidding, guys. You know the drill. So yeah. <laughs>